Happy hump day, ladies and gentlemen. Matthew Bellman, Ryan Kostrowski. This is the DFS 5-pack. It is the 29th of July. We are going to go through the uh, main slate for baseball, the night slate. Uh, just to reiterate a couple things to people, we don't cover two-game slates, like usually traditionally with MLB. I don't know if this year is going to be any different, but uh, I haven't looked that far ahead. Wednesdays and Thursdays have double slates. And if we got three games or more, like in the middle of the day, we'll cover that. But we don't do like two games right before the main slate starts and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, especially when a lot of times these two gamers have start at much different times. Yeah, exactly. So just uh, try to review the schedule with some people, guys. Go hop on the overlay action. I was telling Bellman that uh, user error last night, I accidentally entered the 22 instead of the two and a half dollar one. Came up a dollar short going for that $2,500 jackpot, but it is available to you. Don't forget about the $5 bonus you get for just for beating King Hap in the uh, two and a half dollars one. Lots of different ways to get paid over here. Premier customer service. Go check it out. Try to win yourself some of that money. Get it, guys. So we've had trouble coming up with pitchers the last couple days. I know you liked Merrill Kelly yesterday. I don't know if that worked out. for. I mean, I know he pitched, well, I don't know if you ended up using him or not. But the pitching's been pretty ugly the last couple days. Not really the issue today. And we'll get into some quite a few good pitching options. Uh, meantime, guys, sign up for your memberships today. Lifetime, monthly, annual. we got NBA starting tomorrow. If you want both sports, we will be covering both sports. Also, don't forget to reiterate, day passes are up. Uh, if you're not sure how much time you got, but you just want to play for the day, you can go order a day pass. We will email you out the information for the day. Uh, great time to sign up because we got two sports about to be rolling as of tomorrow. Monthly, lifetime, and annual members all get up. Don't forget, guys, like I said, $5 day passes are up on the website. Uh, subscribe to the station if you're new to it. Thumbs up are always appreciated. Uh, you wanted me to pick the picture today. This will work. Uh, you have a lot of good options. I'm looking at my SP2 right now to be Chris Paddock of the San Diego Padres. Uh, we're both fans of this guy's game. 8400 I find to be uh, an extremely fair price tag for what he offers. He threw over 80 pitches in his first start, which is a good uh, it's a good number for him. Like You look at the top starters on the slate, they're definitely wildly in play, but he did throw more pitches than either of them, which is a good thing for him. Uh, he's tossing in San Francisco tonight. We all know that's a premier place to pitch against a not very good offense in the San Francisco Giants. Plenty of cheap bats. So you can use him as an SP2 today. Um, let me know if you think anything differently, sir. Isn't, isn't this kind of a keep it simple, stupid type play? I mean, for me, it is. Like, he stands out even with a bunch of really good pitchers on the slate. He doesn't stand out because he's better than the rest. He stands out because of his price tag. He's... A legit number one. I'm not going to call him like an ace ace because I reserve that word for top of the line number ones. But he's becoming that, and he's already, like I said, a number one. He's very affordable for this spot. And it's like you said, great pitchers park, awful lineup. I think he gets a ton of love. And so in like tournaments, like I wouldn't be trying to leverage stack against him because he's really good. But I don't think he's a must play only because there's other really good pitchers on the slate. That said, if I were building one optimal line, it's hard not to use him, man. Yeah, this could be a spot too. Like if uh, I know, like for you contrarian players like Matt, who maybe want to go different, if you like him, you can just play him and be different in your SP1. You could be different. Sure. And, you know, you could go cheaper and build with high priced bats today because I'm sure that the, the common build will be high priced pitching and lower yes. cost bats. We're going to go through four low cost bats. They weren't even hard to find today. No, not at all. Um, different slate and that we've seen the past couple of days. Uh, the arms kind of dictate the slate, which is nice. All right, so we'll start off with uh, the first guy that jumped off the screen to me as far as cheap prices go, and that's David Fletcher of the uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Coming in with dual eligibility at both second and third base. Dude's absolutely scorching to start the season right now. He's batting 556 with an OPS of almost 1,300, over 11 points per game. He's not really a home run hitter or a stolen base threat, but what he has working for him, uh, he gets to hit in front of arguably the greatest combination of hitters in baseball today, uh, at least a one-two punch for a team, which is Mike Trout and Anthony Rendon. Now that Rendon's back, this offense is even more potent. Uh, again, dual eligibility really helps for making teams go. If you want guys like DeGrom or Cole in your lineup, you're going to have to focus on some of these 3,300 hitters. So take a look at a red-hot guy batting leadoff in front of you know, arguably the top combo of hitters on any team in what in the league. All of a sudden you add a guy like Red Doan to this offense and it really lengthens it. I know it's just one guy, but 
It's over 10% of their lineup. Moves everyone down a spot that was probably hitting too high. I mean, yeah. Trout and Rendon, it's funny because like a year and a half ago, I would not have said that if Rendon and Trout were together, they would be like the top combo in baseball. But if I had to choose right now the top hitting combo in baseball, it is Trout and Rendon. You know, you can take a look at Bellinger and Betts, and we're not going to argue with anybody that wants to make that argument, right? Those guys are also really, really good, but they are right up there. Well, the thing that Trout and Rendon have for them, and it has nothing to do with Rendon, is that, at, like, ties go to Trout, right? Because, like, it's Mike Trout. And then Rendon is coming off a, an amazing year last year, so that's kind of why I give them the edge. Yeah, I'm with you. I can, you know, again, anytime you got Mike Trout in this combination, as long as the number two guy with him isn't, you know, a stretch in Rendon, like you said, was arguably, he was right there for, I think, third in the NL MVP voting last year. Great yes. season, World Series champion. Uh, let it rock. Also, the Angels are in one of the better spots on paper today, matched up with the young Seattle pitcher uh, at their less than stellar bullpen. So uh, coming off a big night last night where I think they put up 10 runs, I mean, the Angels offense looks to, this is a good jumping off point for them. For sure. All right, next up, speaking of guys that are way too cheap, uh, your boy, Michael Brantley, and even though his uh, matchup with Dustin May, he's no scrub. I mean, why is this dude 3K? Yeah, so Dustin May is definitely no scrub. I think he's a good pitcher. Not trying to use him here, but he's not really a guy I ever want to stack against. But like you said, though, Brantley is just way too cheap here. He's just so much better than this price tag implies. He's much more of like a $4,500 hitter than a 3K hitter. He's a cog in the machine, even in a tough matchup. He hits good pitching. He has the platoon advantage here. He hits in the middle of a great lineup. Like, he's not a must here, but he makes a lot of sense in all formats in my eyes. He's 3K for a guy uh, who's off to a scorching start with his 1160 OPS versus the first four or five games. Um, this one again. There's really good pitchers on this slate. Uh, there's almost never going to be a time where you're going to be able to play both Garrett Cole and Jacob DeGrom together. It's actually possible today with all the cheap guys, including Michael Brantley. Yep. All right, next up, speaking of cheaper guys, I found another really good hitter for sub 4K. That is George, a.k.a. or Jorge Polanco of the Minnesota Twins playing shortstop for them. Uh, again, another cheap guy off to a swing and start, uh, batting 353 on the young season, hit a home run last night. He is better than I think most people realize, and he gets that coveted three-hole for a Minnesota offense who I still think is a little bit underrated by uh, – it's getting there, but I still think it's a little bit underrated – you got Nicholas out now, which brings in Ponce de Leon from the Cards bullpen to be the starter today. So I'm assuming he'll give it a couple innings and they'll move into that bullpen. Polanco's got double digits in three or four games. He's got six hits this year and no strikeouts. Underrated player, hits from both sides of the plate. Uh, he's got protection on both sides uh, all the way around. This Minnesota offense is for real. Yeah, this Minnesota offense is good. And Polanco is also really good. I was watching last night, saw him go yard, crush that ball. You know, he gets a little bit overrated or underrated, excuse me, and kind of go thrown under the under the radar a little bit because he's not the elite guys that we talk about. He's not a Francisco Lindor. He's not like that. But, man, I'm thinking about a guy we talked about yesterday. Who's better, Bogarts or Polanco? I'd probably go with Bogarts. I, I like the numbers that he's put up. Um, I believe that they're going to be better than anything Polanco has offered so far. But Polanco, he, you're right, he's not – Francisco Lindor, but guess what? Who is right? Like Lindor and you know Baez homered twice. Those are probably yes. your elite shortstops. And then you move down to like the the Bogarts. You got an emerging guy like Tatis, but Polanco is firmly in that fifth to tenth best shortstop in the league. I would say. I think he's damn close to a guy like Bogarts, like real close. Um, and yeah, you're right. He is underrated. I wonder where would you have guys? And I guess this is for another video, like Trey Turner and Story. Probably just right above him, right in that, uh, you know, yep. Polanco probably comes in like that eight or nine. Yeah, I think I'd have like Story and Turner right above like Bogarts, but below Lindor. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if you had to go Lindor, Baez, okay. Story, Turner, Bogarts, it's probably your top five shortstops. And then you start moving into guys like Polanco and other arguable guys. Tatis, I'd probably put his number yeah. six. The tease. Uh, yeah, shortstop, it's, it's coming around again. Yeah, definitely a nice crop of young shortstops in the MLB right now. All right. Uh, you want to talk about Jonathan Scope, who got off the snide last night. I think 
the hard part to remember about Jonathan Scope is he's moved around a little bit this year or the last couple of years, but this is a guy who's got a lot of pop in his bat. A ton of pop. He's a guy that we talked about the Twins lineup. He just couldn't stay with the Twins because they had too many other guys that they needed to give run to. I think that this game is – whether or not you want to use pieces from this game, I think it's a really good talking point regardless because the hitters are really cheap from both sides, and we've already talked about how good the pitching is. And this game you know, has, has really interesting hitting options for – you know, all all under 4K, basically. So from the Detroit side, who has lesser names in the Kansas City side, but arguably in a much better spot against Duffy as opposed to facing Matt Boyd, I like Scope here hitting second, very cheap, as you mentioned. He's got big boy power. Another guy, I wouldn't hardly ever call Jonathan Scope a must, but if you want that DeGrom Cole build or Cole Paddock or whoever it is, like, you're going to need cheap bats. And you can pluck one-offs like Brantley and do it that way. But if you want to go with like a cheap stack, I think the Tigers are definitely one to look at and scope stands out. And both the Tigers and the Royals are not going to be world beaters this year. No. Um, but they're not as bad offensively as some people, especially the Royals, but as some people might want to think just at a glance. Their pitching staffs are less than stellar. And Duffy's an enigma. You know, you mentioned him and M- Matthew Boyd. Those guys are pretty similar as far as real-life pitching ability. I kind of look at them. Boy's just a better DFS player because he's added the strikeout to his arsenal. Um, but when those guys are off, they get hit hard. Yeah, they both can give up home runs. I think Boyd is a better pitcher, but I don't think it's like a ton diff- – I don't think it's a big difference. I could see either one of them pitching well today. I could see either one getting lit up. Absolutely, which is just kind of the nature of it. And when you got two less-than-stellar teams like this, neither, neither of these teams really think they have anything to play for. Uh, so they can play free and loose. Some days they're going to be with it. Some days they're not. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. That's what we got for today for the MLB slate. We'll be out pounding out a lot of information the next couple of days since we're going to be dual sporting it for a while, which should be fun, which also means it's a great time to go sign up for your membership. The link to the website is below. Uh, we'll see you guys later on, and um, have a good day. Let's get it, guys.